We're also taking a Sunday off from Exodus, at this service anyway, and uh, I think that sometimes we need to delve back into the Gospels to see, okay, where is Exodus meeting with the Gospel? And there certainly are some points that it does, but I think Jason certainly has a much better handle on that teaching than I do at the moment. And I've found that his teachings have been wonderful so far, so I encourage you to try to get to some of them if you can or look at them online. This gospel, though, is talking about agape love, unconditional love of Christ. We don't practice that too well as human beings because we just don't have the capacity that God does. We may try, and we'll try very hard, but very often we're challenged because forgiving people is not always the easiest thing that we could be doing. And I'm going to tell you a story from my own life that will show you just what I mean. My first husband, well, in an alcoholic blackout, took shots at my daughter and I from our garage roof. This was several years ago in the 80s. He missed but frightened us so severely that my brother, who was staying with us at the time, called the police. When the police came, and they did so silently, they were able to peacefully arrest him and, thankfully, confiscate all his guns. Now, we've been living in an alcoholic life for several years, 19 to be exact, and most of the time, things were smooth as long as I kept my place, he did his thing, and the kids behaved as they normally would. But it didn't take too much. Once he was past the line of no return to make things come undone. But back to the present. I pressed charges, but was told that he couldn't be charged with more than a misdemeanor because he hadn't hit anybody with a gun. I just about died when I heard that one, but that was the law at the time in New York. I don't know about here. I was angry and I was frustrated because all of this disturbance happened after a failed intervention. We had been going, my daughters and I, to Al-Anon and Alateen, trying to make our life a little more likable. But my husband wasn't buying it. He just did not think that he had a problem. So after much soul searching, I filed for divorce. And that was granted a year later. Now, it wasn't all that easy. There were a lot of things that went wrong in between, but I'll spare you the details. I couldn't seem to shake the feelings of anger, though, and depression and grief at the loss of our family institution, our family unit. We had made people from on the outside think we were just a loving group, and then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Of course, the kids were upset. They didn't want to go back to school, but eventually we worked through that with our counselors. I started going in earnest to Al-Anon, but after a couple of times, I was too proud to admit that my life was out of control. Then I was invited to a Lenten prayer workshop by my priest's wife. 
It was an overnight retreat, and I thought, how am I going to do that? I've got two kids to take care of. But they had it all figured out, child care and everything. So I couldn't very well say no, I didn't want to go. So I went, and I spoke with the priest that was leading the meditations for the weekend. Father Smith is a well-educated, very well-respected person in uh, addictions. And little did I know that he had also come through his own problems with alcohol. So he knew where he was coming from, and he knew where we were coming from. He convinced me to give Al-Anon another try. He said, I had to admit that I had no control over my life, but he reminded me that God did and would help. So I went back, and I found difficulty with the spiritual inventory so much that Father Smith became my long-distance, super-duper sponsor until I could find one locally. I learned the wonderful power of God's love and forgiveness through that experience that he led me through. I also learned how to forgive from my heart rather than just saying the words because they didn't mean anything until I really knew that I could forgive that way. I heard the wonderful power of God's love again and again and again. And I also learned how to forgive from my heart a man who was very ill, for his problem is a terrible sickness, and he eventually died from the results of it. So we may be terrified when we think about God's judgment, as the gospel reminded us today, But I remind you that God practices agape love. And I want to refer to the writing in the uh, forward day by day for today. And I think one of these words can say it much better than I. When I practice agape, I am compelled to love even those I think I cannot love. I must look into every face and see a sister or brother. Agape calls me to the love, the world as God loves us unconditionally. When Christ looks down from the cross and prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Jesus never added, but only if they are contrite. or, but only if they love me, or any other stipulations. God's love is open and complete, and it shows us the true heart of forgiveness. May we follow Jesus, seeing through his eyes and loving through his heart as we move through the world today. And remember, soon we will be praying the Lord's Prayer And every time we say the Lord's Prayer, we do say that we will forgive. We need to mean it. Amen.